Hello everyone, it's me again, Lancer737, aka Captain Blueberry Buckaroo, and I'm continuing on where we left off in the Ponyville Mystery Series. We're on Chapter 8, and specifically the Schoolhouse of Secrets novel. We can't just go rushing off after her like we did last time, Apple Bloom said to the others as they hurried out of Sugar Cube Corner. Well, what do you suggest? She's already got a head start, Scootaloo said impatiently. Apple Bloom looked all over, uh, ahead. Looked ahead. <laughs> she could see Lily Moon was uh, headed toward the same tree with the same big roots she had climbed over yesterday. If they had just rushed after her, they could probably lose her again. Apple Bloom examined the options. She saw a larger entrance nearby with a clear path. There, Apple Bloom pointed. We could enter the forest th through there. There, there, so we don't have to, to go crawling around through that the trees and the bushes. It, it, it will let us get a little bit ahead, and then we can wait for her. The others nodded, and they veered toward the entrance. And we're sure this is how we want to spend our afternoon, Sweetie Bill asked one more time. Yes, Apple Bloom insisted. They entered the forest and ran as quickly as they could down the path. Once they thought they were far enough ahead, Apple Bloom motioned for the other two to slow down. They stopped and listened. And sure enough, in addition to the usual spooky sounds of the forest, they could hear something walking through the bushes and uh, making just enough noise to be heard. This way, y'all, Apple Bloom whispered as she stepped off the path and picked her way carefully through the overgrown forest. After all, it wouldn't do them any good if Lily Moon heard them coming. As they got farther away from the path, Apple Bloom quickly realized that as many times as the Crusaders had been in the Everfree Forest, and they had been in there more often than most, they had never been in this particular part of uh, before. Apple Bloom re recalled Zakura had once mentioned that the forest was much bigger than most ponies realized. Even ponies who uh, thought that they understood the Everfree Forest. Apple Bloom was beginning to appreciate just how little she actually knew about it. Something about this part of the forest seemed wilder, more dangerous than the other parts that she knew, and those parts were no trot in the park. Up ahead, she saw what looked like a clearing and heard what she hoped was Lily Moon. She motioned to Scootaloo and Sweetie Belle, and the three of them uh, crept over to the large tree with vines hanging down from its branches. They brushed the vines to the side and peered slowly around the tree. Lily Moon stood in the clearing. She was using her horn to levitate large rocks and stack them on top of one another. Look, whispered Sweetie Belle, it's just like the books in the schoolhouse. She was the one doing it, replied Scootaloo. But why is she doing it here? whispered Apple Bloom. Lily Moon continued stacking rocks and glancing around the forest as if she were expecting someone to show up. Apple Bloom took a step forward to get a closer look and stepped on a twig. It was small and made the thinnest snap, but it was enough to get Lily Moon's attention. She turned towards the Crusaders and stared at Apple Bloom, surprised. Lily Moon, we got a couple of questions for you, Apple Bloom said uh, sincerely and sternly as she stepped towards her. Right, y'all? Mm-hmm, -hmm, she heard behind her. Apple Bloom turned. Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo were wrapped in vines. Their mouths were covered and they were being pulled slowly up into the branches of the trees. Chapter 9 Lily Moon, stop it! Apple Bloom yelled, but when she turned, Lily Moon was gone. In a panic, Apple Bloom rushed toward the trees. She jumped up to grab her friends, but they were already too high to reach. She wasn't sure what to do. She looked around frantically, 
but there was nothing nearby she could use to teach to reach them. So instead, she did what only what any Apple family member in her position would do. She started bucking the tree hard. Put buck, my buck, friends buck, down buck. Surprisingly, this actually had an effect. The vines around Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo loosened enough for them to get their mouths free. It's working, Scootaloo yelled. Keep hitting it. Apple Bloom reared back her hooves. When she felt something down near her, near the ground, she looked and saw more vines wrapping themselves around her. The vines tugged, and with a scream, Apple Bloom was pulled up into the air to join her, the others. This is really bad, Sweetie Blue groaned. It's not that bad, said Apple Bloom, and she tried unsuccessfully to grab on to one of the branches to stop her steady ascent. Not that bad, Sweetie Belle exclaimed. A giant tree is pulling us to the, our doom, and no pony even knows where we're, where we are. How could we get into? How could it get any worse? A noise caught the Crusaders' attention, and they all turned to see Lily Moon standing nearby, watching the tree pull them higher and higher. Well said, Scootaloo. Some pony knows where we are. She glared down at Lily Moon. So this is your plan. We catch you doing whatever it is that you're doing here, and you have your, your trees attack us. We're the Cutie Mark Crusaders. We're going to get out of this easily, Scootaloo struggled harder. But the vines around them tightened. Lily Moon didn't say anything. Instead, she rushed over to the trunk of the tree and started feeling around with her hooves. Whatever she was doing caused the tree to pull up the vines faster as if it was in a hurry to do whatever it planned to do with the ponies. Lily Moon, please, shouted Apple Bloom. You don't have to do this. Lily Moon ignored Apple Bloom as she continued searching around with her hooves. She reached underneath a lower branch and the entire tree shuddered. She pressed harder and the tree began to sway back and forth. The crusaders all screamed as they rocked along with the tree. Lily Moon looked up one last time before rushing off into the forest. Great! Scootaloo yelled. She's, she sicks her trees on us and then takes off. What now? Help us! Any pony! Sweetie, Blue, uh, Sweetie Belle yelled. Scootaloo and Apple Bloom joined in. We've been, we're being eaten by trees! Scootaloo yelled. The tree continued swaying as it did. The vines around the ponies loosened. They quickly became loose enough for the ponies to uh, untangle themselves. Apple Bloom, uh, Scootaloo, and Sweetie Belle jumped down and ran a safe distance away before turning back to watch the swaying tree. As they did, the tree slowed its, slack, its back and forth motion until it eventually once again stood still. The vines dropped and hung inconsistent but the Crusaders now knew better than to approach it. Why did it let us go? Sweetie Belle asked. A better yelling scared it, Scootaloo said confidently. Seriously? Sweetie Belle asked. I don't think the three ponies scared out of their minds screaming for help would make a tree that is hungry stop. Lily Moon left, Apple Bloom said, looking in the direction that she ran. As soon as she saw they were gone. The three stopped attacking us. The trees stopped attacking us. She was doing it. Yeah, because she knows the 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 one who messed up the. Uh, I can't talk because we know she's the one that messed up the at the schoolhouse and attacked Pip. Skulu said angrily. Should we go tell some pony like um, maybe our sisters? Sweetie Belle asked. No, Apple Bloom insisted. We're going to Lily Moon's house on Horseshoe Hill, and we're going to get to the bottom of this. I knew that's what you were going to say, Sweetie Belle said with a heavy sigh. Chapter 10 If Diamond Tierra hadn't told the cutie, cutie Mark Crusaders where the house on Horseshoe Hill, Horseshoe Hill was, Apple Bloom was sure 
they never would have been able to find it. Now that, that she was looking at it, she recognized it by, uh, it, it was way by far one of the largest houses in Ponyville, but it was so tucked out of the way that she had probably passed it hundreds of times in her life and never noticed it. Ponyville and the Everfree Forest were right next to each other, but there was unusually a clear division where one ended and the other began. High on the hilltop, the house blended into the forest, almost like it was part of it. Vines wrapped around it, the walls of the five-story cottage. Th trees grew right next to it, and branches brushed against the windows. The cottage itself seemed to be somehow wider than other buildings in Ponyville. Wow, Skulu said, studying the house. This is definitely the scariest house in Ponyville. Sweetie Belle finished. Yeah, definitely the scariest house in Ponyville. It's just a house, y'all, Apple Bloom insisted. Now let's go get a better look. The ponies crept up to the hill, careful to stay clear and close to the trees and brushes so they wouldn't be spotted by any pony. They crept even closer to the house, the vines growing up against the wall wrapped tightly around the windows. Great. Sweetie Well muttered. More vines. Apple Bloom rolled her eyes and pushed the vines out of the way with her hooves. Through the window, they could see what looked like a, a workroom. There were jars filled with all kinds of things, strange plants lining the walls, lab equipment set out on tables, and two unicorns, one male, one female, wearing goggles and standing next to a large cauldron. They had the same lavender complexion, blue mane, and piercing violet eyes as Lily Moon. Do you think those are Lily Moon's parents? Skulu whispered. Apple Bloom slushed her and kept, I mean, hushed her and kept watching. One of the unicorns, the male, poured vials filled with different liquids into the cauldron. The other unicorn plucked leaves off a nearby plant and dropped them into the mixture as well. The cauldron bubbled violently as purple smoke poured out into the floor. What kind of potion is that? Apple Bloom wondered aloud. So she squinted, but couldn't. was getting harder to see with what was going on. The window was so foggy. Uh, Apple Bloom? Skilu tapped her with her hoof. Apple Bloom turned and realized it wasn't just the window getting foggy. A mist had come out of nowhere and surrounded them. Apple Bloom and the others tried to back away from the window, but their hooves stuck to the ground as if they were made of taffy. Gross! Skulu yelled at her as her hooves sank into the ground. I can't move! Sweetie Belle squeaked as she tried in vain to back away from the window. A chuckle echoed around them, but they couldn't see any pony through the fog. Who, who, who's there? Apple Bloom asked. What do you want? What do I want? A crackle, a cackling voice asked with another cackle. I'm not the one snooping into the other pony's business, now am I? A glowing horn appeared as the fog swirled away, revealing an old unicorn. She was at least as old as Granny Smith, if not older, and had a tangled gray mess of a mane. She studied the Crusaders carefully. Auntie Eclipse thinks you should answer your own questions. What do you want? Before any pony could answer, an explosion from inside the house engulfed them all in smoke. I'm going to leave it right there, mainly because the space I have for this recording unfortunately but that means uh the next recording will have more chapters hope you guys enjoyed the cliffhanger i left the story on and i hope you're enjoying the story and i hope you're having a good halloween season take care and happy halloween <laughs>